two seasons ago, Mark and I had the opportunity to test Tyga's prototype Nomad electric snowmobile. It was far from polished, but performed admirably for something so early in its development cycle. This past winter, Tyga invited us to ride the Nomad so we could see firsthand how far it had come and decide for ourselves how viable an electric snowmobile could be. How's it going, Anthony? How's it going, guys? Good to see you again. Anthony, good, good to see, see you, you, man. How are you? Good, good. All right, you guys ready to head out with the, with the Nomads? We've never been more ready. Awesome. Uh, so the plan for today is for you guys to head out, enjoy the Nomads. You've got a town called Lac Sege, about 55, 60 kilometers from here. Perfect for you guys to have a little pit stop, lunch, recharge, and then head back. All right, I, get, I think you guys are pretty familiar with how snowmobiles usually work. Uh, so pretty simple acceleration braking. I think you got that down. Uh, the difference is here, they're completely quiet. So to know that they're in drive, you got to make sure that the tether cord is connected to the socket here. Make sure your kill switch is up and then you press the start stop button. See how the numbers are blue? Mm -hmm. That means it's ready to go. It's in drive. You can see the start stop button also is lit up in green. Then when you stop, you want to put it in park. You just press it again or hit the kill switch. Okay. Numbers go back to gray and it's ready to go. And uh, how do I get to wild mode? Yes, sir. So you can <laughs> see on the screen right now you're in range mode. You've got your mode button here on our new cluster. So you just press it and it cycles through the mode. So Perfect. range, sport, wild. And if you want to go back to range, just keep pressing it. Awesome. Through. Cool. Okay, man. Well, listen, thanks a lot. Uh, we're pretty excited about this. You're trusting us to take your babies out on a ride without you, but uh, we'll, we promise to be good to them. The purpose of this trip is to get real-world experience with the world's first production electric snowmobile. We want to get an understanding of how the improvements made from the early version have changed the overall riding experience. We want to get real-world impressions of how it rides and handles, power delivery, and how the user interacts with the sled. The first thing I noticed was how much more refined the entire vehicle felt versus the version I had ridden last. From the controls to the ride quality, the handling, and the power delivery, it all just felt right. The ride quality was a big improvement especially and really stood out. It's far more plush on the small bumps without sacrificing its bigger bump capabilities. We'll be riding a total of 160 kilometers or 100 miles on a mix of high speed rail bed and tighter bush trails. Our destination is a trailside diner that has a charging station right next door. We will be stopping at another charging station in a grocery store parking lot along the way though. This is only because we will be doing a lot of extra riding while filming, not because we would actually need it if we were doing this trip without cameras. As we were riding, I was cycling through all the different drive modes, and they each offered distinct power characteristics. Range mode was, as you'd expect, very mellow. Power delivery was extremely soft and top speed was limited. Sport gave a significant jump in power delivery, but was still smooth and easy to modulate. Top speed was no longer limited, but it was still pretty clear the system was holding back. But when you switch into wild mode, power delivery is aggressive to say the least. Acceleration is more than a little bit impressive and the vehicle reaches its top speed quickly. It was easy to get the sled to tail out in the corner if you're using wild mode. By the time we'd reached our lunch stop, we had ridden about uh, 80 kilometers. At this point, both Mark and I were anxious to get our helmets off and start discussing our thoughts on how the vehicles had performed this far. So there's the one sled, 83%. It's been charging for 48 minutes. Huh. $12. <laughs> and then the other sled is at 75 charging for 50 minutes for 10 bucks. So what did you think after riding for 50, 60 kilometers? Well, I think there was a lot of surprises in terms of what I think and what I feel riding that sled, but for sure the level of refinement, the, uh, the way it takes throttle, the way it responds to throttle, like the quality of finish, you can see that in a showroom, but the level of refinement you experience when you run it on the trail, it's smooth. Um, I, I got to the point, I know you, you did too, but I got to the point where I was really quite comfortable. I think the thing for me that stood out after having a chance to ride it like this was how it didn't take a long time for me not to notice that I was riding an electric snowmobile. There came a point where I just started riding a snowmobile. The fact that it was electric became irrelevant. Yeah. And I think that's important because we've talked about this so many times. 
having an electric snowmobile is great, but it has to be a snowmobile first. Right. Right. So the fact that we rode these and it just became a snowmobile. The whole time all we could talk about was, hey, this thing's electric. That would actually be worse than the fact that we got to a point where we didn't even notice. Not noticing that it was electric meant that I was appreciating the calibration of the skid, the, the back end of it works really good. The front end is remarkably good mm -hmm. and yeah, like good handling, cornering, turn in. I really like the way the front suspension worked as well. Yep. It's, it's a good snowmobile. It's like you said, it's gotta be a snowmobile first. Yeah. We rode some rough sections of trail too and I was impressed with that front end Mo more than anything else. I think the front end really blew me away that it, it handles really good. Well, for a first, I mean, this is the first full production year of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. They have moved mountains and they've done a remarkable job. Who's it going to appeal to? Well, first and foremost, it is an electric snowmobile when it comes to appeal. Mm -hmm. And so there's got to be a situation with the purchaser where they can use this vehicle within the parameters that it allows them. That's what they expect, that's what they want, and mm -hmm. that's what they're going to get. They're just going to get a really good snowmobile with an electric motor. Be making those decisions on whether or not it meets their expectations, mm -hmm. but I think it's gonna I think it's gonna surprise a lot of people. Yeah. I do. I think there's people out there who are gonna be absolutely blown away with how good it is. You know, being used the way it's intended. The, the improvements they made since the ones that we rode before, those early prototype ones, are drastic. Yeah. And make for an, an remarkably better snowmobile. Yeah, there's no, you can't compare what, what we were exposed to initially. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, well, it means all their work paid off. It sure did. And was worth it. So we should probably stop talking and start eating because in about 15 minutes, we're going to be fully charged and ready to go again. That's cool, yeah. yeah. So what it looks like to me, Luke, is that uh, a clubhouse sandwich and a cup of coffee is worth uh, about the same as the time it takes to charge a Taiga. Well, it basically means that charging, if you ride like we did today, isn't an inconvenience, right? Because we weren't doing anything but eating anyway. It didn't take any time out of our day to charge. No. We just charged it while we're eating. So there's going to be situations where that's not the case. But if that is the case for you as a rider where you live, there's really not that many downsides here. I'm, I'm really impressed with how this charging system works and how fast it is and how efficient it is. In that case, let's unplug and get moving. All right. Total mileage for our trip was 160 kilometers or 100 miles, not including extra mileage for filming the ride footage. We stopped on the way to the diner and charged the batteries an extra 40% for $7.72 per sled. During the lunch stop, we added 80% more charge to the batteries for $17.50 per sled, which was more than enough to get us all the way home. Quebec has a vast public electric vehicle charging network that services over 5,000 kilometers of snowmobile trails, so access to chargers is never a problem. Other provinces and states are continuously improving their charging networks as well. Luke, how was the, <laughs> how was the ride? Hey man, we had a really good time, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, we, we've come away with the best impressions you could possibly ask for, so. I'm um, glad. We had a great time, we, we rode further than we thought we were gonna ride. We hit a lot of benchmarks that we had put in place for ourselves to believe that an electric snowmobile could be a legitimate snowmobile, and we passed all those benchmarks, so very impressed. That's good. I mean, 160 kilometers is only a sliver of what's accessible in Quebec, too. Yeah. We have a really good public charging infrastructure, and this works on the same chargers as cars, so there's chargers everywhere. I think there's over 5,000 kilometers of trails in Quebec that you can access using electric snowmobiles right now. And, and because you can go, the distances we went between charges, you can pretty much hit any charger you need. There's always a charger within range. For sure, and if you do overnight trips, a lot of hotels have level two chargers now, so overnight charge and you're good to go in the morning. Same with restaurants. You know, that was great, man. Well, thanks for helping us close out the season on something totally unique and totally fun. Appreciate it. I did on a high note, I like it.